Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stoneblock 3, and in this episode, our base has gotten a little bit bigger. And that is bisco biscuit? <laughs> and that is because in today's episode, we are going to be dealing with or why did man manipul manipulation dropped into my head? Or processing, that, that's the one. However, there is one slight problem that we need to solve before we go ahead and do ore processing, and that is me not getting any gold nor copper. Now, I could go ahead and set up some gold and copper chickens. However, they only generate nuggets, so I would need quite a lot of them in order to for it to be, well, viable. So to get gold and copper, I am going to be needing to set up a little bit of a system here, which I'm kind of prepared for, as well as a bunch of other stuff as well. First off, I have made two 16K storage disks, which means when I plop these in, we now have space for 48,000 items. We're not gonna run out of space anytime soon, even if we're not using drawers. Second, I kind of went, well, crazy with some furnace upgrades because I thought, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade every single furnace to, well, obsidian apparently. <laughs> that, there we go. I, I really hope it's actually faster. Let, let's take a stack here. Let me grab some coal. Let me grab a little, grab a, li gra grab a little bit more coal. Oh wow, yeah, it's faster, all right. That's so much faster. Okay, that that's actually awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and set some raw osmium to cook because we are delving into mechanism today when we get to all processing. Wow, this is fast. Anyway, the way that we're going to get more gold and copper is from washing. If it's here somewhere, nope, that's not it. Hold on, nope, that's the use case. I need the recipe. We need to wash sand, and to get sand, I have a plan for this. I have a cobblestone generator. Then we need to run it through three hammers because the first hammer we're going to uh, basically turn the cobblestone into gravel, then into dirt, and then into sand. So that is three hammer processing. Pro process pro pro processes. Pro three hammer tasks. Then eventually dropped onto a washing place, and then this thing, the advanced item hopper, which I already got from uh, getting a reward from completing something in the quests, and this thing can basically be filtered to only pick up certain things. So as you can see, first of all, it has a huge radius, but we can lower this way more, and then we can also add a filter, we can set it to whitelist, and let it only set through whatever s washing sand gives us, so copper, gold, etc. So that is most definitely the plan, but just before we do that, apparently making a mining laser or a mining gadget is not that difficult. I just need some glass, some glass panes, which should be very easy to go ahead and make, and then make a blank upgrade module, and then go ahead and get the mining gadget. And it is now getting energy from the thing, thing from power. And if I go to mining gadgets, I can give them different upgrades. So I can give them silk touch, I can give them void junk, magnet, upgrade. So it mines out a 3x3 three three area using power. Okay, actually, that might be really, really cool. I might want that, actually. I can upgrade the range, I can upgrade the fortune level, or I can give it fortune level. I can give it a better battery, I think. Battery tier 2, yep. Yeah, this is... This is really cool. I want to make this though. I want to make this real quick. That shouldn't be too tough to do. Just need another one of these. A diamond pickaxe. Now, I don't know how I actually add these. Oh, I think I need the modification table. Oh yeah, that's, that, that's, oh wow. Okay, th this looks cool. I'm scared of pressing any buttons though. Modification table coming up. I assume this is gonna need power. No. Okay, so insert, uh, shift click to insert from your slot to drop upgrade onto the screen, click up to upgrade to remove. Three by three. Okay. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna place this over here. <laughs> let's, um, let's try this real quick. So this is my farm, if I just go ahead and... I thought I gave it a 3x3 three three area? Hmm. Ah, so there is a keybind in the settings. I've set it to zero right now. And we can change the size right here. We can adjust the 
range, we can edit the visuals and the volumes and everything. But now, we can also, of course, increase the speed. Okay, this is actually really, really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really awesome. Oh yeah, I also made this wireless crafting grid because I actually had the wrong thing before. This is what I wanted right here, to basically have that screen right there on me at all times. However, the thing that I had before was this thing, the wireless grid. I think anyway, uh, wireless, no. The thing that I had before was this wireless crafting monitor. What you need is the wireless crafting grid. And this basically means I can access my storage well, as from 16 blocks away, I can access my storage and I can also craft using it. But enough of that, let's set up some copper and gold generation. All right, I think I have everything. I have three hammers, a bunch of chests, an underside funnel, advanced item collector and ender chest. So this should be everything that we need in order to set this up over here. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is set up the item collector, which I think I'll just set up right over here which is just essentially going to be an ender chest on the white channel, so it connects to the same one as the crusher. And then I'm going to place the advanced item collector on top. I'm gonna set it to whitelist so it won't pick anything up but the stuff that's in the filter. And I'm going to decrease the range so that it's only this small area. Next, I'm going to be needing definitely at least one chest here with then the andesite funnel right there. So it's actually going to drop item. That's not the right button. If I drop an item in there, and I change that to be, hold on, range, go ahead and change this to output. It's gonna drop it right there. Now I just need to set up this cobblestone generator and these iron hammers so that it all ends up to becoming sand in this chest. All right, I think all I need to do is place this cobblestone generator tier two right there. Then we can have an auto hammer placed right over here, just need some space to work with. And then I can have a pipe right there and set it to grab my wrench output. And that is now getting cobblestone. And that's the output, I'm pretty sure. So I can place another auto hammer right there. That then has gravel. I'm then placing this here. And it has dirt. And that should, if I then go ahead and do this. Yep. That is placing sand, and I'm just gonna make sure that it's actually sand. Yes, perfect. Okay, wow, this was actually a lot faster to set up than I had anticipated. <laughs> oh wow, and we're getting items as well. Okay, next thing that I need to do is to set up. Oh wow, that's so nice. That looks so nice. Next I need to do is go ahead and take the items that we actually get from this process. So. I'm just gonna actually make a list here on the right, so I can go ahead and grab it all. So we definitely need gold and copper, obviously. I don't actually have any copper ore. Do I have any copper ore here? I do indeed. Okay, yep, this is good. Now, before I'm actually adding this to the white list over here, oh, well, it's actually going. I need to go ahead and set some of this stuff to have their own drawer, which I think I'm gonna go ahead and do just over here. I'm gonna place data there, fluoride there, appetite down here. I actually have a lot of appetite, as well as then the sulfur. Then I just need one of each. There we go. And this is then everything that we need to add to the whitelist. So we go ahead and add this here. I can add gold, all of this here. And everything is now going to get picked up that the sand can actually produce, but not the sand itself and everything fits perfectly in this filter, wow. Yep, we now have, just like that, automated gold and copper generation. But you look at that, it's working. So I could probably increase the speed with this by a lot if I upgrade all the hammers to diamond level and then also upgrade the stone generator to higher as well, such as diamond or something like that. But that is going to be, give me that, give me that, give me that. Oh, two of them. Wow, nice. But that is going to be something that we do at another time. I'm probably going to do that off camera, actually. Now we're getting to the ore processing, which is going to be really interesting. I know the plan, but I'm not sure how it's going to work exactly. Well, I do know how it's going to work, but I'm not sure 
basically how this is going to go, because I don't know if I have everything covered. First of all, we're going to be making a purification chamber. This is so we can go ahead and take in ore. So let's say raw lead, which we have right up there. That will then be turned into lead clumps, and we have, I, sh I think we have a bunch of flint, so that should be fine, which then gets us lead clumps. So that is an, a duplication right there. And if we go ahead and put that into the crusher, we get dirty lead dust into an enrichment chamber, which leaves us with uh, lead dust, and then into a, if we keep scrolling here, an energized smelter, we can then get the ingot itself. Now the very first thing that we need to do in order to make these machines is going to get, be getting an, a metallurgic infuser, which actually the recipe is not that complicated, so we can actually go ahead and get that right away. What am I missing? Oh yeah, need two furnaces. <laughs> That's the only complicated part. There we go, we're gonna get one of those. I think we will be needing more as well uh, further down the road. However, I'm also gonna get a stack of redstone. What I also need to do is go ahead and run some cabling into the basement. So just gonna get some of these, what am I missing? There we go, get those. All right, this should be fine. And I think if I go ahead and run, uh, hmm. I mean, if I dig down here, you will see that we get into the basement, but I would love to just come down somewhere. So I may want to lead some power somewhere. All right, this hole is in the middle of the room, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a bunch of power cables leading back to the energy cell right here. Then I can close up this gap, and boom, we now have power leading into the room. I should probably make this place look a little bit fancier as well, shouldn't I? Especially this place. Anyway, let's lead down the power, and we're gonna place a metallurgic infuser. <laughs> set it up like so, and boom. I'm going to put the redstone in here because we need redstone in here to make a bunch of the components. Mainly, we're going to be needing these basic control circuits right here, which is just a bunch of osmium. So if I just go ahead to the surface, grab, let's say, uh, half a stack maybe, half a stack of osmium, place it in here. Don't know if that's enough redstone, I think it is. This now just needs to run because we need some for the smelter, crusher, and purification chamber. We need the advanced ones, which is some infused alloy. So we also need to run some iron into this thing as well. I think 16 is probably going to be enough. All right, I'm pretty sure we now have what we need in order to make most of the things. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I forgot. We need steel. And in order to make steel, we're going to be needing another metallurgic infuser. However, I'm gonna move it over here a little bit. There we go. Gonna move the power over, like so. And now what we need to dump in here is going to be coal. And then first off, I need to drop the coal in here, or the iron in here. That is then going to turn into enriched iron, which you can see right here. And then I need to put the enriched, enriched iron in to the metallurgic infuser again, together with coal, and we will get steel grit, which we can then smelt and turn into steel ingots. I just realized that there is another machine that we can make as well, actually thanks to uh, the mechanism part in the quest line here, the oxygen, or making oxygen right here. And that is with the electro e electrolytic separator. Probably butchering that, but anyways, what we can use this is we can turn, like it says here, if I click on it, the electrolytic separator turns one chemical into two others here. What we would be turning, we would be turning water into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is what we will need for the purification chamber right here. So instead of using flint, we can now use this machine, which basically just uses water. All right, after some investigation and preparation later, we are now ready to begin. So the first thing first that I want to make is the ele electrolytic separator, which in order to make that, I need to make this the core. I'm not saying that word again. The separator, there we go. This has now been made. And what I also want to go ahead and do is make some mechanism pipes real quick. These are fluid pipes right here. And then these are pressure tubes, which is what I think we will need in order to transfer the oxygen over. Next, of course, we can go ahead and make the purification chamber and the crusher. We need to go ahead and make some steel casing. We can actually go ahead and put the steel in there. So this will go a little bit faster. So energized smelter, 
boom, right there. We're done with the metallurgic infuser. The crusher can be made now as well. And the purification chamber is going to be a little bit more complicated. We need two advanced circuits right here. Go ahead and make two of those. We also need the enrichment chamber in order to make that. So there we go, enrichment chamber. And now finally, we got the purification chamber. Boom. That wasn't too bad, actually. Now comes the setting up part of this, which is going to be the interesting thing. Um, I think I'm going to try and put this over here. So this is the electro... I said I wasn't going to say this word again. The separator. And what I have set up in between here is I have set up a water chicken as well as a lava chicken, because the lava chicken now generates lava eggs, which I can actually... I found out I can use in a really cool way. I haven't hooked this guy up to the main system yet, by the way, but I will do that in a moment. Because with these water eggs, I made fluid, there we go. I can go ahead and say I have, yes, this right here, the item drain. It is really easy to make, you just need a copper casing and iron bars. The copper casing is made with any type of stripped log, together with some copper ingots. So if I place this here, connect this up, and I think I might need a mechanism wrench pretty sure there's a wrench somewhere you don't have to use mechanism pipes by the way i just like it because you can actually see the items that are going through which i think is cool so yeah that's why i'm using those all right so with the configurator i should now be set this to pull and if i now right click a water egg this should be uh yep there we go Add that into here, it already had a little bit of power starting, but there we go, we're generating oxygen as well as hydrogen right there. And of course, we do need to set this up and get power, like so. So it actually doesn't, yeah, there we go. Um, what I can also do is I can change the sides. So uh, I can say input is dark red, which is front. That's not quite right. Uh, if I say... This is aqua, cyan, which is then left, and I say input is red, so I want this to be red, I want this to be none, this to be none as well, because we want to output the oxygen over to, can I remove this? Yes, I can. <laughs> so I could basically now put the energized crusher, the purification chamber. I could basically put the purification chamber. Wait, hold on. Am I doing this right? Yes, I am. I could basically put the purification chamber right up next to it and I wouldn't have to worry about the pipes. But because I think the pipes are cool, I'm going to... That's hydrogen. I do not want hydrogen in here. <laughs> I do not want hydrogen. All right. I finally figured it out with the help of the people in the FTB Discord server. Really, really helpful people in there. Anyways, apparently in the side config out here, I was adjusting the one for items. If we go over here, there are different tabs for gases, fluids, and energy. So if we go into gases, that's why the uh, hydrogen keeps getting outputted to the, to the left here because it's actually set to this. So if I clear this, and I clear this as well, set this to cyan. Now oxygen is being put into the purification chamber. Now one final thing that we need to do in order for this to work properly, we need to set this one to dumping excess. That just means when we have this tank full with hydrogen inside the electrolytic separator, it's going to dump the remaining stuff in. Now all I need is to basically just connect the water eggs to this thing, which I think I can do with just some item pipes and a an ender drawer. We'll have to test that. But first, now that we have this setup going, we need to get the ores into it. But before we do that, once the ore has been put in here, we need to then eject the items over to... Oh, I need some item pipes. We need to move the items from the purification chamber over to the crusher. And I'm going to do this using a basic logistical pipe. Again, you don't need the pipes. I'm just doing it because I like the look of it. I might even remove them. I'm probably going to revamp this entire thing because I want this place to look nice. So I'll probably revamp how this all looks. I'm going to set auto eject to on, which is going to push the blue items into here, into the crusher, which is then going to crush it. It, of course, is going to be needing some power, like so. And then they need to be moved over to 
Finally, the energized smelter, and I'm out of energy cables. But there we go, and then that, of course, can go into... Well, actually, it needs to go into an ender chest, which leads back to this wall right here. Which, for that, I'm going to go ahead and set up a separate network for. I'm just going to name this the red network. And we can pop an importer onto that. And is that they connected? Yeah, that's fine. And then down here, we then need the output, auto eject, clear this, output blue on the left, right into there. And of course, we then need this to be red, just like so. Next, I'm going to place an ender drawer right here. I am going to have to, of course, lock it. I will then add the water axe. Uh, unlock it, add water axe, lock it. <laughs> then include it, just like so. Go down here and place another ender drawer, just like so. I think we can use... Oh, no, we can't. I may need to go ahead and do something else here. Apparently, it can't take the input from the top, but it can take it from the bottom. If we then go ahead and set this to pull. All right. I punch this, so I store the frequency. And I right-click here. That is then going to automatically tag... Uh, tag? <laughs> take the water eggs in here. Which, of course, we need to then connect to the chicken network. Which we do right over here. Yep, there we go. Set this to then pull. That should then work. We should see the water axe go up. Yep, it is indeed going up. So we have an infinite supply of water. Goes into here. Releases all the oxygen. Nice. Perfect. Now the interesting bit. I need to get all the ores somehow to automatically travel down to, to the chamber below. And I think this is actually going to be pretty simple. I have grabbed every single piece of ore. All I need to do is connect this exporter to the network up there somehow. I need to apparently run quite a few more cables. But if I go ahead and do this, I need an item cable. Plop that in there. Go ahead and tell it that the back... Oh, that's the bottom. The back is the input right there. Place a diamond chest on top with an exporter. And then in this exporter, we tell it, hey, export all these items. Uh, hmm. Apparently, I have reached the limit. I just changed sync to iron just for now, just so we can test this. Then I need to run some cabling. Uh, yep, this should be fine. So all I need to do is run this all the way down here. And this should start working. As you can see, we're getting the ores and... Oh, it's not auto... It's auto-ejecting, but it's not auto-inputting. Uh, I may need mechanism types or cables. Place that there. Take this, configure it to pull. And it's automatically going to pull the ores in. Now, I may need to set some sort of limiter to this thing so that it doesn't take all the ores or increase the speed of this thing or something. But there we go, we have gold lumps. If we go auto eject is on. So these should be, I'll put it to the right. Uh, auto eject is on. Maybe I need to, uh, oh, I need to set input to dark red. Output is blue. So this is now crushing the ore clumps, and we should then get gold, dirty gold dust. Oh wait, dirty gold dust, I'm missing a step. I need the enrichment chamber. <laughs> Didn't I get the enrichment chamber? Nope, I did not, okay. Enrichment chamber going down, side config, input, output, auto eject should be on, auto eject should also be on. So that's going in here, so this is now getting cleaned, and then we put this uh, right here, like so. Auto eject this on, final cable in, and boom, gold dust is being smelted, just like so. 
and of course we need to give it power. Now with all these five machines running, I wonder, like right now it's just gonna get the gold. Which is a problem, of course, because it's going to do that until it doesn't have any gold. But as long as we generate gold, it's going to keep giving us gold. But I wonder how our power situation looks right now. Yeah, we are draining a lot of power. Which I'm very happy that I made these hardened integral components, which is instantly going to increase our or double our power production. We are now generating more power, I think, than we are using. <laughs> <laughs> now these generating ADRF attack, they are using coal a little bit more, I think. But we have plenty of coal, so that shouldn't be an issue. And I think we can see the gold ingots go up as we speak. Potentially. Maybe. Yep, there we go, 118. This is awesome. And what I can do is I can just install a lever right here. I can then set the exporter to only work without a redstone signal. I'm giving it the redstone signal with the lever, which means we're not getting any more items, which basically gives us time to process all the ores. So when I'm up there, I'm like, oh, we're missing ingots of stuff. Then I can just pull the lever and extract a bunch of items to be smelted. This is a really neat setup. Now again, you don't need to have all those pipes in between. It could be a lot more compact if I just added everything together. Which I'm probably going to do. I'm going to decorate this place in between episodes. But for now, it gets the job done pretty well. And our power generation is currently in control. Very, very nice. I missed the door. I'm also just currently looking at, or I was looking at the upgrades. We are able to make some speed upgrades, which increases the speed of the machinery. We can also make a muffling upgrade, which reduces the noise generated by the, machi by the machinery. So I think in between episodes, I'm probably going to take a look at some of those upgrades, maybe make some, and yeah, like I said, decorate the rooms. But guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. I really hope you have enjoyed. We did quite a lot, actually. We set up automated uh, ore processing right here, which is really, really cool. We also set up automated sand washing system right here, which I'm really happy with. I'll probably be upgrading that in between episodes as well. We made a really cool mining laser, which I also need to make some upgrades for. In the next episode, I think we will be working towards upgrading our power generation setup. We are currently keeping up with all the machinery at the moment. However, it would be nice to having something that generates a lot more power and might have something in mind. So we'll take a look at that. We can also take a look at um, what's what's it called? These ender cells, which I assume means that we can transport our uh, power wirelessly which would be really awesome so i'll be taking a we'll be taking a look at that as well but for now that's going to be it for this episode really hope you have enjoyed if you did be sure to leave it a like subscribe if you're new enable those notifications if you're brand new and don't want to miss the next episode and i hope to see you in the next one have a wonderful day and until next time goodbye <laughs>